I've had a lot of people asking about fractional shares and how they work and should they buy these. You know, we, we've done other videos before on this. A lot of people come in new, they don't see these old videos. And there's also other things I want to bring up about fractional shares, uh, comparing it with time sharing and also, um, you know, buying the uh, actual unit outright. Um, so let's get started on this. Uh, how do fractional shares work? Well, basically, I'm going to give you an example of a developer that builds, let's say, a 20 million U.S. dollar hotel where each investor owns a thousand shares valued at 200 U.S. dollars a share, giving the investor a 1% ownership in the hotel. Now, the shares will go up assuming the shares were bought at a reasonable price to begin with. Now, the problem with this is most of the shares that are bought fractional wise are very inflated prices where the price per square foot is a lot higher than if you bought the whole hotel outright. And when you buy fractional shares using this method, it just, uh, you know, buying a uh, property, it just costs a lot more per square foot than if you bought that whole, uh, the whole hotel yourself. Now, now, that, now, a lot of people might say, well, you know, you're paying a lot more for it. That, you do have to take that in consideration for a hotel when you're buying the whole thing. Your use is supposed to be getting it at a cheaper price per square foot than if you bought, you know, small portions uh, it, itself. But I, I'm going to give you some examples of how inflated some of these fractional shares all uh, are, you know, when you're, when you're investing your hard-earned money here. Now, in this video, I'm, I'm going to give you the facts that will help you make the right decision when buying a property and whether to use this method or not, you know, when you're making a choice. Also, if you're making at least 150,000 US dollars a year and or you got a net worth at least 1 million US and you want to learn more how to legally get your taxes to zero or how to get a second passport as quick as 45 days, do three things. Hit the subscribe button on the right of your screen right here and you'll get new videos automatically as they come out. And I would like to hear from you if you got a question or comment, put it below. And number three is go to our website, www.citizenshipquickly.com and ask for some help. All right. In fact, buying fractional shares, you could uh, put your cost per square foot 20 to 30 times higher uh, than the square footage than if you bought that whole ho hotel yourself. Now, this investor that I was just talking about has 200,000 U.S. dollars invested uh, in this example that I gave, uh, which has hit the minimum threshold of 200,000 U.S. dollars to qualify himself and his family for citizenship in St. Kitts and Nevis. And it has to be bought in a development that, of course, has been qualified as a citizenship development. Now, you're going to have to wait seven years from the title date before you can resell the shares. Otherwise, if done before this time period, your citizenship would be revoked. Now, let's look at fractional shares and should you buy them to get citizenship by investment and also the difference in fractional shares and, and time sharing. Now, um, you know, with time sharing, you don't own the actual property, whereas with fractional ownership, you do own a fraction of the property. It's not so much uh, ownership versus non-ownership, you know, when you're looking at fractional shares, uh, as, as far as do you own the property and, and time sharing, there is no ownership. Uh, the problem with both methods of investing is there is no demand for resale. Let me repeat that. There is no demand for resale on either time sharing or fractional buying. Now, don't learn this the hard way and then buy it and then try to resell it. Trust me, okay? If I had to go with one option, I would pick fractional over uh, time sharing. But the key idea is, uh, uh, you know, uh, they both have dismal growth prospects. I mean, if you look at rate of return wise on any sort of rent you're going to get versus uh, the growth, it's going to be dismal. Uh, it's kind of like uh, asking someone, would you rather uh, be stung by a black widow or be bitten by a rattlesnake? You know, they're both going to lead you to bad results. OK, now, when you buy a time sharing unit, you have no ownership of the property at all. Uh, you have control over a certain time of the year that you use the property uh, and an annual maintenance fee that you would have to pay whether you use the property or not. When you buy a fractional share of a property, you own a fraction of the property based on the number of shares that you own. You then share the property tax and the maintenance fees with other owners and you have usage of the property only a few weeks of the year. Now, fractional shares have a cost that's usually a lot higher than time sharing the same number of weeks each year uh, uh, for, you know, to, to buy the property or to use it. In, in the case of uh, time sharing, you actually don't own the property. You, you basically just use the weeks of the year, uh, and, and that's what you're paying for. But they both have one thing in common, and that is dismal growth in profits in, in for what you've paid for the investment. Now, my brother bought a time sharing unit in about 1980 and wanted me to look at buying one at the same place. But after looking at it, you know, I had no interest at all. It didn't take me any time to realize that was going to be a bad investment. 
We're like 41 years later from when he bought this timeshare unit, and he still cannot sell that unit for under what he paid for it 41 years ago in 1980. This is how bad an investment can be when you uh, don't buy the whole property. Okay, that's the difference. Now, in my career of selling properties, I've never had someone that was buying a non-citizenship property asking me to buy shares in, 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 uh, in a property through fractional ownership. Uh, the reason for this is simply because there is no uh, demand for fractional shares. Fractional shares are not bought or sold to people. Any developer or uh, who promises to, to buy your fractional shares after a seven-year holding period uh, required by St. Kitts Law you, you, to keep from losing your citizenship uh, will also have to probably have some really fine print, fine print so, so small that you can't read it, because if you read it, you probably wouldn't go with it. But uh, I'll guarantee you one thing, and that is... Uh, that you will end up on the losing end if you go with fractional ownership, okay? Now, why do developers sell fractional ownership? Because it's a lot more profitable because you can subdivide the property uh, where the cost per square foot is a lot higher, and this makes the developer a lot more money. And number two is the uh, St. Kitts and Nevis government uh, has uh, allowed a lot lower limits at 200000 for limit uh, for the sale of fractional shares versus the resale of a full, full ownership unit priced at 400000 uh, minimum. Now, these are the key things you have to look at. Anyway, folks, if you want to have more information on this and you're making at least 150,000 U.S. dollars a year and or have a net worth at least 1 million U.S. and you want to legally get your income taxes to zero, how to get a second passport, as quick as 45 days, do three things. Hit the subscribe button on the right of your screen right here and you'll get new videos as they come out automatically. And I would like to hear from you. If you've got a question or comment, put it below. And number three is go to our website, www.citizenshipquickly.com. Hit the top button. This is apply with us. Fill out the questions. Hit that bottom button. This is send it to us. We'll get back with you. We deal with over 100 citizenship by investment, residency by investment countries all over the world. And I look forward to talking to you on the next video. Take care.